it was the baboon's mother who disapproved and broke up the game, Gilka returning, as usual, to Ollie Longface. After eating meat, the chimpanzees felt bloated and relaxed. Baldy McGregor groomed a friend. Willy Wally Suck Suck suckled air. Warzel struggled to remove something from his ears. Fabin stretched out, looking big and mature, while adolescent Figgin pulled more faces. Flint was now five months old. Suddenly, Fifi noticed that he was taking his first steps. Fifi took the sleeping flint, tired out from walking. But Fifi wanted flint awake. As usual, Fifi was determined. And as usual, Figgin got involved with his feet. But this time, it was Flint who took umbrage. While Figgin and Fifi were occupied with each other, Flint practiced walking. It was not easy, but sticking out his tongue seemed to help. Gilka pirouetted close by. Their playing made Ollie Longface nervous. Flo might not approve. So she left, forcing Gilka to follow her. Left alone, Flint went back to his family. Fifi was soon on the spot. She wanted to take Flint for a ride on her back. Gilka saw her little friend in difficulties, so she went over to help. But Flo wanted no interference from Gilka. And to make this clear, she stepped on her.
Flo was once more in charge of Flint. Fifi followed her past Gilka, who made a rude hand sign, which Fifi returned. Once again, Gilka was left without a playmate and only her mother for company. By following their mother, Flo's large family learned how to survive in the forest. By watching her, they discovered what plants were edible, which trees would bear fruit at what time, and how to find their way. Figgin liked the lead. He was eight years old, and he knew the way. In the meantime, Flint practiced back riding, but it was not easy. He often slid off and had to discover other ways of traveling. Flint's antics were tolerated by Flo, but occasionally she needed a rest. She was about 45 years old and could not always keep up with Fabian and Figgin. Fifi made use of the opportunity to take Flint, thereby helping her old mother so that they could continue their journey. With Flo not objecting anymore to her daughter carrying the infant, Fifi had at long last fulfilled her ambition. To Fifi, the future must now have seemed full of promise. few weeks, Flint learned to ride properly on Flo's back, instead of hanging on underneath. This made life easier for his mother. Fifi was still allowed to take Flint, but at this moment, she did not want to. They were approaching a termite mound, and a special delicacy lay in store. Flo plucked a grass stem to use as a tool for catching the termites, and then inspected the mound. Maybe her eyes were not as good as they used to be. For Fifi had no trouble finding a mud-covered entrance and poked it open. She inserted the stem. Termites bit onto the grass tool in defense of their nest so that Fifi was able to extract them as a crunchy meal. Even though Flint reached for the grass tool, it would be years before he could master the technique of fishing for termites. Fifi noticed that Figgin had joined the big males on another mound, even though all he could do was watch. Baldy McGregor arrived. He stood and walked upright more often than the other chimpanzees. Ollie Longface and Gilka joined him. Baldy McGregor saw that the termite mound was crowded. He waited in case a place came free, preferring to join the males. At the female's mound, Ollie picked a vine stalk 
an implement she would find unsuitable and discard. In the meantime, Gilka had found a termite hole, but seemed nervous that her mother might take it. And she was right. Ollie let Gilka have a turn. But her patience did not last long, and she clumsily tried to distract her daughter by using her long lips to tickle Gilka's neck. Catching the termites was not one of Ollie Longface's accomplishments. Her nervous movements made the termites fall off. Fifi was now allowed to take Flint whenever she wanted. It gave Flo a chance to relax. But Flint was getting heavy, and when he held on tight, his grip pinched. Fifi had lost out. Having finally been allowed access to Flint, she could not cope. For the first time, she returned him to flow. Flint was no longer a baby. He was a little boy now. Fifi's behavior to little boys was different, as Flo soon noticed.